How's it going everyone? I can't believe this is vlog number 13 already, but here we are. We're back in Bristol for this one, playing 1-2, one, but we've got a few different destinations coming up in the next few weeks. Going to London for some poker and I've got a home game on Sunday that I'm going to play. So that is all footage that you can expect in the near future. But for now, just enjoy the vlog, leave a like, subscribe and comment. Thank you very much. Okay, it's been a pretty slow start to the session. We've been sat down for about 30 minutes until we pick up our first proper-ish hand. We've got ace three of clubs on the button. The under the gun player has raised it to seven pounds. We've seen a call from the under the gun plus one player and the hijack. So we probably should just fold this hand, but you know me, I like to be aggressive. So I'm gonna raise it up to 25 pounds. I hadn't checked how much the under the gun player had left in the stack and I really should have because he only had 50 pounds which he decides to put all of it in the middle. The other players get out of the way and considering it's only 25 pounds to win about 100 pounds I obviously have to make the call now. So we chuck in the money and we're going to see five cards. Our opponent turns over his hand and very fortunately for us he has ace three of diamonds. So we've got the same hand and on the flop we see one club. So we've got a bit of a sweat, but unfortunately on the turn it is a blank and we're going to chop up the first pot. A few orbits later and we are in the hijack with ace seven of hearts. We see a limp from middle position. I decide to raise it to 10 pounds. We see a call cool from the button, the small blind, and then the big blind decides to min click it up to 20 pounds. The middle position limper who only had 16 pounds in his stack decides to put the rest of it in there. I call the 20, the button calls and the small blind calls. So we are going multiple ways to the flop which comes down 7, queen, 3, 1 hearts. So we've got a bit to work with here, we've got a pair, we've got a back door, nut flush draw. But obviously when it checks to us, we are going to check and it checks all the way around. On the turn we see the 5 of hearts giving us that nut flush draw. The small blind now decides to lead out for 15 pounds. The big blind calls and obviously I'm not going anywhere. I don't think there's much merit in raising here. Maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't see any at the time. So I decide to make the call. The button folds and we are going to a river with four of us left in the pot. The river is the nine of clubs. So unfortunately we miss our flush. We don't improve in any way. But fortunately enough, the small blind checks and the big blind checks, so we can just check and pray somehow that a seven is good here. I think it's very unlikely, but there's no real point in bluffing here. We're not gonna get any better hands to fold. So I check and we go to showdown. The limper actually had pocket aces, so he's gonna take down the main pot and the big blind had pocket jacks, so he is gonna take down the side pot. So we're in the low jack for this hand and we've got queen jack off suit. I think that's good enough for a raise, so I make it six pounds to go. The button calls, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls. So we're going four ways to a flop, which is seven, ace, two, with two spades. It's worth noting that these players have been very loose. A lot of them are friends that play at a home game. I think this was the first time in a casino for a couple of them, and they seem to be playing very loose. Uh, playing any two cards, having a bit of fun, splashing around. So when it checks to me, I decide to go for a bet. I can obviously have all the strong aces here. They shouldn't have many of them. So I'm going to continue for a bet of 10 pounds. This obviously doesn't work completely. The button calls, the small blind folds, but the big blind calls as well. So it's still three ways when we see the queen of spades on the turn. It brings in that front draw flush draw, but it also gives us a pair. So when the big blind checks, I think we are just going to take our showdown value now. No point having to bluff when we've got a decent showdown. So I check and we see the button checks as well. The river is the two of clubs and the big blind is going to check once again. I think again, everything I said on the turn, it still stands now. There's no point going for a bluff. We've got decent showdown value. So I check once again. And this is when the button decides to go for a bet. He makes it 25 pounds. The big blind gets out of the way and I actually think about this for a while. Obviously it's a pretty dangerous board, you'd think this is probably maybe an easy muck. But a few things, the friends had been mentioning that this guy is the bluffer at their home game, always trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. And I've seen it myself in the few hands that we played together, he seems to over bluff a lot. I would have thought he would bet a flush on the turn and potentially maybe raise an ace on the flop, although probably not. But again, I think, you know, being in position on the turn, he would have bet a flush, so I'm not sure what he's trying to represent here. 
Uh, maybe it's going for something value of an ace, but in the end I decide I can level myself into a call here, so I do. And fortunately we were right in this situation. Our opponent shows us king 10 off and we are going to win this with a pair of queens. So we move seats one over to the right just to get a better camera angle and we are in the cutoff in this hand and we've got ace jack off suits. There's a limp from middle position and I am going to raise it up to 10 pounds. The button decides to cool and the limper cools as well so we are going three ways to a flop of two, four, five. The limper checks and I'm going to play this passively. I can definitely represent some stronger pairs, but I think after watching my last vlog or reliving that moment, I think I need to play a bit more passively, not taking every opportunity to bluff. So I am just going to check and the button decides to check as well. We see the five of diamonds on the turn, the limper checks once again, and I'm going to bet now that I see that the button doesn't seem that interested in making a move for it on the flop. So I decided to go for a bet of £16. The button does call this and I think that means we are done unless we improve, but the limper folds. So on the river we see the ace of spades, giving us that top pair and I think that is definitely good enough to go for another bet. So we're going to make a bet of £22 and our opponent snap shoves for only £67. I don't know why I made this cool, I did cool, um, I think it's a really bad cool. I'm trying to think in the moment, I think I thought that he thought I was bluffing, I leveled myself into this silly train of thought. Anyway, I made the cool and he shows us a very interesting hand, he shows us 6-3 offsuit which was very unlikely, but I just don't think it's a very good cool, I don't think he's bluffing very often, he almost always has a 5 or better. Uh, like he did in this case, he's got a straight. So good hand to you, sir, and we are going to lose this one to 6-3 offsuit. Moving right along, we are in the big blind for this hand, and we have Queen Jack of Diamonds. Very nice hand, and we see a limp from early position. Folds around to the small blind, who is going to raise it up to £11. I think we've got an easy cool here, and the limper decides to make the cool as well. We see quite an interesting flop of king, queen, 10, giving us a pair and an up and down straight draw. Small blind checks, and I think we're just gonna check and try and realize some of this equity, and the early position player checks as well. So we are going to the turn, which is the king of diamonds. Checks to us once again. Um, it's a, quite a good card. It means it's less likely our opponent has a king. I think we could potentially bet here, but in the moment I decide to check. I'm not sure which one I prefer. Maybe leave a comment, tell me what you prefer. I think I quite like a bet here actually, try and get some money from lower pairs that our opponents could have. Um, but like I said, we check and the early position player decides to make a bet of two pounds. Well, quite an easy call here. The small blind makes the call as well and we are gonna call and we see the seven of hearts on the river. This is when the small blind decides to leave for £25. Now I don't know what to make of this. Um, it's probably, well the one, one that happened that made sense to me at the time was pocket sevens. If you somehow managed to spike a seven on the river for a set. I just thought it was a very weird line. Didn't make a lot of sense to me. So I decided to make the call and see what he's got. The early position player folds. And sure enough, our opponent has pocket sevens. I probably should have just folded here as it's very unlikely our opponent is bluffing in a spot like this, but I really wanted to see what he had. Okay, we are on the button for this hand and we have ace jack offsuit. The cutoff is gonna open this one up to seven pounds, same player as last hand. I think we're just gonna cool this one instead of getting it all aggressive like we did last vlog. Trying to learn from our mistakes there and we are just gonna cool. And the big blind makes the cool as well. So we're going three ways to a flop of ace, eight, nine. P looking pretty good for us. We've got top pair. Big blind checks, but the cutoff decides to continue once again. He goes for 12 pounds. Now, I think about this for a while. I know this player, I've played with him a few times. I know he can get a bit spewy, a bit bluffy. So I'm going to try and deny some equity from potential draws out there, straight draws, flush draws. So I re-raise it to £35. Um, unfortunately, the big blind says that's not enough and he goes all in for over £100. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, something like £120, £130. The cutoff folds and I think we can make a very easy fold here. I'm pretty sure that our top pair 
me medium kicker is not good in a spot like this, so we fold, and the big blind's gracious enough to show us that he flopped two pair with ace eight. So good hand to him, and we lose this one as well. Not the best start to this session, but hopefully we can turn it around. And we've actually got a good hand to help us do that. In this hand, we have pocket queens. Obviously going to be raising to six pounds. The button then decides to re-raise us to 17 pounds. And then the small blind flat calls. Well, given that action, I think we are gonna put in the four bets. We make it 55 pounds to go. The button snap calls us. Uh, but the small blind folds, so we're going heads up to a flop of 8, 6, 4, all clubs. Now we do have the queen of clubs, but I decide to check and pot control. I don't want to inflate the pot too much. I did speak to a couple of people after this hand who thought I should bet this flop. But there you go, always learning something new with this game. Um, and our opponent checks back on the flop. So we're going to a turn, which is not great for us, it's the ace of spades. I check and our opponent decides to bet £44. Well, we're not going anywhere just yet, he could easily be bluffing, plus a club could easily give us the best hand, so I make the call. The river is the king of spades and I'm going to check once again. Our opponent thinks about it for a while and then decides to check back, saying he, he's given up. We show our hand, our opponent shows pocket jacks and we are going to take this one down. We are in the big blind once again in this hand and we have ace jack of diamonds. The low jack has raised it up to seven pounds. The cutoff has cooled and I think we are just going to cool as well. Could potentially raise but I think we've got a decent hand to see a flop with. So I make the cool and the flop's pretty good for us. It's jack four seven, rainbow. We're gonna start with a check, potentially check raise if someone makes a bet but no one does. It checks all the way around. So we're off to the turn, which is the nine of diamonds. We're definitely not letting it check again. The board's a bit more wet now. We want to get some money in there. So we make a bet of 20 pounds. The low jack falls, but the cutoff thinks about it for a while and then makes the call. So off to the river, hoping for a brick and a brick is what we get. We see the three of clubs on the river. Obviously going to be betting once again. I decide on a sizing of 30 pounds. I think we could have gone a bit bigger here, potentially 40 pounds or 45 pounds. Really tried to squeeze some value out of my opponent's holdings. Um, it seems like we actually chose the right sizing though, as our opponent goes deep, deep into the tank before eventually deciding to cool. We show our hand and he mucks. He would later tell us that he had King Jack, so it's pretty inescapable, that sort of situation for him. And we are very happy to take down another hand and be back into profit. Ace Queen this time in the high jack. We see an open from the low jack to £10. We're just going to cool and the button decides to cool as well. So we're going three ways to a flop of 8-3-3 with two spades. The low jack checks, we're going to check, but the button decides to go for a bet of £17. The initial raise of folds and we could definitely fold here but I think sometimes ace high is good here and we can definitely hit some cards that will improve us and potentially give us the best hand. So we're going to make one call and see if we can improve on the turn. Unfortunately we don't, we see the five of spades on the turn which brings in the front door flush draw. So we're going to check it over to our opponent once again who goes for a big bet of £55 and we are easily done with this hand and we throw away our cards. So we've looked down at pocket aces in this hand, but there's a bit of confusion at the table. The under the gun player has made a string bet. I didn't see it, I don't know what happened, but apparently the table has decided that his bet stands. So he's raised to seven pounds. I ask, I just clarify that it is seven pounds before making my raise. I go for 22 pounds and it falls back around to the under the gun player who makes the call. The flop is quite an interesting one. It's six, ace, two, all spades. So it gives us top set, but there are three spades. Potential for a flush out there, obviously. Um, and this is when our opponent actually decides to lead into us for 31 pounds. Now think about this for a while. I ask him how much he's got in his stack. He's got about 250 pounds behind. Thinking about raising, trying to get it all in. But eventually I decide on a cool. I'm not sure if this is the right play or not. Uh, but that's what I do, and we see the five of diamonds on the turn. Our opponent checks now, and I don't think we're going to be checking it back. I think with his flushes, he's going to continue 
again put some more money in there so we are trying to deny equity from some of his spade holdings he, uh, if he's got a strong spade obviously we're going to get some more money out of him we go for a bet of 75 pounds and our opponent pulls quite quickly not too worried still think he would go for a bet with a flush and we see the king of diamonds on the river our opponent checks once again and since our opponent only has 171 pounds left in the stack i think there is only one move and that's to go all in our opponent thinks about it for quite a while he's in the tank for about a minute until eventually he decides to cool brilliant we show our hand our opponent mucks and he would later tell us that he had two pair with the king of spades the nut flush draw so unfortunately for him he didn't get there fortunately for us he didn't get there and we take down a really big pot here that puts us about 300 pounds in profit so the camera angle has changed once again that's because we've changed tables our table broke there weren't enough players and in this hand we are in the cutoff and we picked up pocket nines obviously going to be opening this to seven pounds the button calls and the blinds fold so we're going heads up to a flop of ace six two I decided to go for a bet here, try and represent an ace. Could go either way, I suppose, between betting or checking. And our opponent makes the call this time. The turn is a four, and I think we are just gonna give up on this hand. I check, the opponent bets 12 pounds, and I make quite an easy lay down. So it's a few orbits later, we haven't picked up many hands. Uh, about 20 minutes has gone by, and now we are on the button with ace-king offsuit. A middle position player has raised it up to eight pounds and we are obviously going to be re-raising this to 25 pounds. The small blind flat calls but the initial raiser decides to fold. So we're going heads up to a flop of 10, 9, 5 with two diamonds. The small blind checks and I think this is a flop that definitely favours him a lot more than it does for us. You know, often when people call, flat call a three bet, they have those middling pocket pairs, jacks, nines, tens, those sorts of hands. And this board really connects with his range better than it does for us. So we're gonna check it back and we see the eight on the turn. The small blind checks once again, and when he checks again, I think he hasn't got a lot. So I decide to go for a bet myself now. I make a bet of 50 pounds, it's quite a big bet, I'm not sure if this is the right sizing, I think a smaller bet would have been a lot better. Fortunately it works so and our opponent folds and our opponent would later say that he had a small pair. We've got ace king again but this time it is suited. The straddler's on which is the first time tonight I think we've had a hand with the straddler's on and we see a raise from the under the gun player to 15 pounds. It falls around to the low jack who decides to three bet it to 50 pounds and then it folds all the way around to us in the small blind. I think we could probably go either way between cooling and raising here but I decide because we are out of position and I'm willing to put all the money in with this hand that I am going to four bet it up to 135 pounds. The initial raiser thinks about it for a little bit but decides he doesn't want to get stuck between me and the low jack player so he folds and then the low jack player thinks about it for quite a while he's in the tank for way over a minute until eventually deciding to fold it's good to take this one down pre-flop i was kind of excited to have some action but i'm not going to complain definitely happy to take down 65 pounds without seeing a flop we just keep getting premium hands in this hand we have pocket aces in the hijack there is an early position raise to eight pounds and obviously we are gonna be re-raising this up to 25 pounds. The early position player makes the call and we are going heads up to a flop of ace, king, seven with two hearts. The opponent checks it over to us and I think we're gonna go for a bet, try and get some value from a king, maybe a queen's jacks and some flush draws. So we make a bet of 20 pounds and our opponent calls quite fast. The turn is the nine of diamonds and the opponent checks it over to us once again. I think we're gonna size up here, really try and squeeze some value out of some top pairs that our opponent might have. Try and price out some of those flush draws and straight draws. So we go for a bet of 85 pounds. But fortunately, our opponent obviously didn't have much and he snap folds. Another hand, another premium holding, this time pocket queens on the button. We see an open from under the gun to eight pounds. 
the cut off calls and we are obviously going to be raising this once again we make it 25 pounds to go the under the gun player makes the call as does the cut off so we're going three ways to a flop of five jack four with two spades it checks over to us and i think with this particular flop we want to bet get some protection get some value from top pairs and deny some equity from flushes so we go for a bet of 50 pounds that's too much for the under the gun player and the cut off they both fold and we take down a nice little pot here we are already on to the penultimate hand of this session and unbelievably we have aces once again you've seen three of them on the vlog but we actually had another one which we opened and everyone folded so over the course of the five hours we were playing we got four aces this is unbelievably lucky in this hand it folds all the way around to us on the button and we raise it up to seven pounds the small blind calls and the big blind has that mischievous look in his eye and he decides to raise it up to 35 pounds i decide to actually call here lay the trap keep in the big blinds bluffs and potentially keep in the small blind if he wants to call as well which he does so we're going three ways to a flop of six, seven, eight with two clubs. Not great for our hand, but when it checks to us, I think we are going to put in a bet and try and get some value from worse pairs and deny some equity from the lots of draws that are available on this board. So we're going to make a bet of £65. The small blind isn't interested, he folds. And the big blind apparently has nothing as well. So although we had aces a few times, we didn't get too much value from them, apart from the one where we got top set on. But I'm very happy to win this one, and we are up to over £400 profit now. This is the last hand of this vlog. We are on the bottom with ace two of hearts. We see a limp from the low jack. The high jack then decides to raise it up to £10. We're going to cool. Small blind's gonna cool and the limper cools as well. So we're going four ways to a flop of queen, king, 10. The flop checks all the way around. No one seems that interested and we see the queen of diamonds on the turn. It checks all the way around once again to me and I decide to put in a bet. No one seems that interested. So maybe we can just steal this one away with a little bet of 15 pounds. So that's what I do. Um, unfortunately, it does not work. The small blind falls, but the low jack makes the cool. So we're going heads up to the river, which is the ace of spades. Brings in a flush draw. Well, three, three spades, I should say. A potential flush. Um, and obviously, four to a straight. So unfortunately, I don't think we can check it. We do have showdown value with our top pair. So it goes check, check. And our opponent shows us a flush with jack three of spades unfortunate that we couldn't get him off that on the turn but good hand well played to him that was yen and um, that is the end of this vlog i hope you all enjoyed so we had a very fortunate session today we had aces multiple times ace king queens all the premium hands and it really paid off at the beginning of the session we were down about 150 pounds but after we started getting the premiums the money started rolling in and we ended the session up 440 pounds